Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another 6.5 in the IBM booth. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2022 in Barcelona. Let me introduce our co-host, Daniel Newman. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. It's good, good to be here. You're not going to say more importantly now, are you? I am, but more importantly, our guests. Mike from Boston Dynamics and Rob from IBM. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? Very Fantastic. good, how are you? Good, I tell you what, I have never been more popular when Spot from Boston Dynamics walked up and did a cameo for one of our videos. I know he's being a good boy right now, yep. uh, but I tell you, I thought I was popular, but it was actually Spot. But anyways, we are back at NWC. We're live, we're not virtual. It's great to see people again. Yeah, it is. Not I know, it's great. It yeah, it is good to be here. And by the way, you're right about Spot. And yeah, we got a crowd. Yeah, yeah. And then right. left, and nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody stayed. Um, so very compelling is the is the moral of the story exactly. there. It's it's deeply psychological. I think there's something instinctual about it. something that embodies that kind of cognition that attracts people. Yeah. And they just they want to see it. They want to be a yeah. part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about that. You know, we've been talking probably for feels like years now about data informing operations. But you guys in the area you're focused on with robotics, real robots, are starting to find your technology growing in importance and coming into organizations, collecting data and using to drive and inform. What's going on there? So I think the really important thing is dynamic sensing. Yes. So it's not just about it being a robot, but. Yeah, it's, you know, we've all been pursuing ITOT convergence for 20 years. Uh, a lot of industries have already taken advantage of a lot of the advancements around ML and AI. Yeah. But a huge segment of our economy, the asset intensive industries haven't been able to do that. You know, if you look at the average age of all the equipment out there, it's 26 years old. It doesn't have sensor capability on it, so there's no data. So we're filling that gap so you can capture the data on the operational and maintenance aspects of all this equipment and then feed it into the great advancements that we've made around AI and ML. Yeah, I mean, think about these old machines with analog gauges on them. Yeah. They're not participating in the digital era, right. right? So how do you get access to that? You take something like Spot, who's able to walk up to this, look at it, use visual analytics and recognition there to convert that digital, that analog value into something digital that then we can then use in our automated processes. You know, it's interesting. I, I feel like uh, intellectually we've figured that out, but there's been a lot of challenges along the way. I'm curious from, from the IBM point of view, how are you enabling this? How are you making this happen? So I think a couple of things have happened that really created a breakthrough. First of all is the work that Boston Dynamics has done on creating mobility to bringing sensors into this environment. And that had to happen. I mean, if you have to put out a bunch of fixed cameras, yeah. you're never going to get the coverage, you're never going to get the resolution, and it really becomes hard. Combine that then with the breakthroughs that we've had in AI that have occurred over the last few years, where now we can literally take a model, run it on a relatively small edge device, right. pick up the video data off the camera, and interpret what that really means, right, with some degree of precision. So we've taken those two things, specifically, running it as an edge computing device. Um, we do the inferencing there on the edge, and then we transmit it back with uh, to issue work orders, right? To, to get the people out that need to be there to go you know, fix the fire extinguisher problem or fix the problem with you know, the electrical system that's creating these thermal anomalies, et cetera. Yeah. It's, a, it's a perfect timing issue. To Rob's point, the advancements in AI and the mobility platform comms comes into this. A few years ago, was the comms infrastructure there to support it? No, so that was another aspect That's of it. That's interesting. And then all the push around IoT, customers are starting to realize that if they can achieve adoption, full adoption of IoT, the ROI benefits, uh, uptime, throughput, reliability is astronomical. So there's a lot of focus on that, but they haven't been able to really embrace it because of the all the barriers we had before. This helps to break down a lot of those barriers. And one of the things about comms is that, you know, these have, things have to be wireless, right? You can't drag a cable behind this robot as it traverses the six kilometers of manufacturing space. So it has to be wireless. The problem in the manufacturing space has been that things like Wi-Fi, that spectrum interferes with the operational equipment on the factory floor. So it wasn't until things like 5G came along that you use spectrum that doesn't have that interference that really is unlocked the opportunity for us to wirelessly connect these things. Wait, so there's 5G on spot? So we've actually added 5G <laughs> on spot through 
um, essentially a wireless modem, right? Yeah. So we literally take a mobile phone that's 5G enabled and we attach it to the back of Spot's back and then we do a, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot over to the computer. On I had that. no idea. Yes. That's fun. Yeah. You'd call that innovation, maybe? Yeah, yeah. a little innovation. Yes. <laughs> um, and by the way, very fitting for mobile world, because yeah. you know everything here is 5G, which, by the way, can't believe we're not going to ask him a question about that, but we're actually not going to ask you a 5G <laughs> question. We've, we've had a lot of that in this. Well, we answered it right. anyway. We just knew you, you, found you found a way to loop it in. There, you found yeah. a way to bring it in. So thank you for that. That's, a, that's important. So let's talk a little bit about the, you know, the collaboration. I want to end this conversation on that topic. So you know, you're talking a lot about kind of you know, the, the, the general, what's going on with, with this relationship. But people always want to hear examples. They want to understand, you know, specifically, what are the use cases? What are some customer examples, if you could share any, you know, specific to the collaboration that's going on between Boston Dynamics and IBM? Sure. Yeah, should I talk about the, you sure. want to do it? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. all right. So, so one use case is fire extinguisher inspe uh, inspections, right? So every manufacturing site has to go out and make sure the fire extinguishers are in place. The fire extinguisher is mounted properly, it's properly charged, the hose is attached to it, there's no obstacles in front of it. Likewise, electrical problems, right? You know, electrical problems occur throughout the plants all the time because all the movement, all the vibration and industrial activities are going on in that space. And so for both of those, We've taken advantage of the platform that Boston Dynamics brings to the table to be able to get the sensors to the right place, the sensors are integrated into that platform, using that as a feed, coming into the analytics that looks at the visual, uh, visual uh, input, either in you know, the human spectrum or the infrared spectrum, um, and then maps that to against you know, what's, what's, what are the tolerances that you need, and then we're out of tolerance, we kick back a request to Maximo. Right. Um, so, you know, the platform, is, it starts with the platform, right? Yeah. So we take, to, to build on what Rob was saying, we use the mobile platform. No one can uh, afford to fix sensors ever, all over the plant, put a mobile bank of sensors on spot, yeah. integrating in with the IBM Edge technology and into Maxima, another IBM product. So it's looking for anomalies in the plant. So it's, imagine uh, when you crank your car, you immediately know if there's an abnormal sound. That happens in the plant today. A lot of the people are maintaining these plants all over the world have been there for 30 years. They can walk by a motor or a pump and say, there's a high pitched squill, something's wrong. When those people leave, called the aging workforce, when they retire, all that knowledge is walking out the door. Working with IBM, we want to capture what normal looks like, what good looks like, and so we can more quickly and effectively identify those anomalies. And so we capture that in AIs and we run them on an edge computer right there on the device. And you need that because number one, those images may have people in it. Right. And now you got a privacy issue, right? right? So we, we, we capture the image right there on the computer, on the spot, um, we analyze it. If we detect an anomaly, then we're going to issue a work order request. If not, we throw the image away. Right, and that way we are able to protect the privacy of the workers on the floor. Yeah, the opportunities for safety are just, just incredible and, and the examples of 5G and, and automation inside of warehouses, inside of factories, and different places, just a ton of opportunity. And I'm fascinated, I, I want to tell you Mike, watching YouTube videos of all the cool stuff that you have going, it just, it, it really stretches your imagination on, on what can be done and then when you align that with big data, uh, training, machine learning inference, you really have something that can just be safer, almost like an autopilot of, 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 of some sort. Right, it, it, and it also, it, in the right way to think about this is that it's really augmenting the people that do this work themselves, right? Yeah. So yes, people today go out and they look at fire extinguishers and they look for thermal problems, um, but A, it's tedious, Right. right. It's probably not the most productive use of their time. Sometimes it's dangerous, so from a safety standpoint, right. or it's just, you know, something they don't have time to get done, right? And so, and therefore, you know, the inspections aren't getting done, and therefore the safety issues that come from that are, 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 are out there. So, you know, this is something that really is augmenting the humans that, the, in the tasks they have to perform, taking care of some of the stuff that they just simply don't want to do or shouldn't be doing. I love that you said that. In my most recent book, Human Machine, we actually focused on that. There's a part of the world that thinks automation is the displacement, and really what it is is it's up leveling. Yeah, that's right. And so that's, that's, right. that's such a good example, though. You know, yeah. humans have so much potential. Our empathic skills are going to be incredibly difficult to ever replicate, but some of the 
you know, the, the physical automation really can be, and we can keep pushing the world forward with technology. So, Rob, Mike, thank you guys so much for joining us here for this 6.5 in the booth. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, thank absolutely. You very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.